It's been a rough first few weeks with Trump in office, but I'm not entirely convinced it's totally his fault. Mostly because none of his ideas seem to be his own. They've come from Fox, or Infowars, or the KKK. Literally, the KKK. So, if the man in the high hotel isn't running the show, who is? The man no one elected, stringing Trump along like a needy three-legged shih tzu, Steve Bannon. The former Breitbart executive, known for trafficking in hyperbole and racist stereotype trying to pass as news, has influenced a lot of the president's policy and penned some of his most extremist statements, earning him the nickname President Bannon. From the inauguration speech he swore he wrote himself to the ban on Muslim immigrants, we've come to find out the actual president isn't totally behind crafting his own ideas. With a little help from these winners, Bannon is. See for yourself. We all bleed the same red blood of patriots. We're at the very beginning stages of a very brutal and bloody conflict. Trump's inaugural speech set the tone for a dark, authoritarian view on governance, notably using the words carnage, bleed, and sad for the first time in any inaugural speech. Not only did Bannon admit to writing this, but you can see how his extremist worldview has seeped into other official policy. In a comment to the Daily Beast, Bannon said, I want to bring everything crashing down and destroy all of today's establishment. How about Trump's executive orders? Christianity is dying in Europe and Islam's on the rise. Up to 5 to 10 percent uh, believe in radical jihad. I mean, you're talking literally, they said thousands, you know, hundreds or thousands are coming in. Well, if you want to destroy the government like Bannon, a great way to start is by getting your authoritarian butt buddy to sign an unconstitutional ban on Muslim immigrants without telling anyone else in any other branch of the government. As for Trump's feelings on the media, one guess as to who baby hands is emulating. The total deceit and deception makes them certainly partially the opposition party. When we look at Trump's most volatile language so far, Bannon is the common thread, and Trump just demoted military and intelligence experts to give him a seat at the National Security Council. If we want to get to the root of the problem, at some point we've got to focus on the guy who has literally admitted to wanting to tear it all down, and not in the cute, radical gay way. For those of you who can't stomach politics without comparing it to a damn Harry Potter book, Bannon is Voldemort and Trump is Pettigrew. Bannon is Darth Vader and Trump, down to the temperament, is Kylo Ren. Bannon is Sauron and Trump is gonna end up locked in some tower because one day a gay wizard will say, enough. But even comparing Bannon to fictional villains doesn't do the situation justice. Not because it's too hyperbolic, but because it could never properly encompass how extreme Bannon's views are. Again, everything from here on in, is gonna be hard and nasty and ugly. This isn't conservatism, folks, and it's not just populism. It's a desire to create chaos in order to legitimize a consolidation of power based on a narrow nationalist ideology. That's not who we are. So what do we do? Keep protesting, keep harassing your legislators, and keep standing up for the rights our Constitution grants the most vulnerable in this country. But if we want to show it is unacceptable to entertain hatred and bigotry in this nation's highest office, we have to start by making sure men like Bannon don't determine our future. Trump has shown time and time again he'll repeat whatever's politically expedient. So don't make it easy for an extremist, fear-mongering nationalist to usurp the presidency. It's time to impeach President Bannon.